The NFL has been a staple in American sports since 1920, even after the president condemned the NFL. Your San Francisco quarterback, I'm sure nobody ever heard of him. NFL owners don't want to pick him up because they don't want to get a nasty tweet from Donald Trump. Do you believe that? Then there were the TV ratings that took a nosedive in 2016 and 2017. But it's still proving to be a big success for all 32 NFL teams and their owners. 28 NFL teams are valued over $2 billion. So how is it that these teams are worth so much? To answer that, you have to look at how hard it is to start your own franchise. The last time an NFL franchise was started was back in 2002. It's rare to start a new NFL team, but when it happens, owners have to pay something known as a franchise fee. Some NFL teams have been around since the National Football League start in 1920. Back then, the franchise fee was about 100 bucks. By 1960, the Dallas Cowboys had to pay a million dollars to enter. And in 2002, the Houston Texans, which are the newest team to join the league, paid $700 million. Some NFL teams are still owned by the same families who started their franchise nearly a century ago. The Chicago Bears were founded for $100 in 1920 by George Hallis. And as of 2018, the team is still in the family. It's owned by his 95-year-old daughter, Virginia McCaskey, and it's now worth an estimated $2.9 billion. And let's say you want to buy your own NFL team. Most recent sales have been in the billion dollar range. The Buffalo Bills went for $1.4 billion, and in 2018, the Carolina Panthers were sold for a record $2.2 billion. So what kind of return are teams getting back from their billion dollar investment? There's only one team we definitely know what they're making every year, and that's the Green Bay Packers. The Packers are a nonprofit corporation, the only one in the league. So we have access to their annual filings. They made $454.9 million in 2017. The other 31 teams are privately owned, but Forbes releases the valuation for all 32 teams across the league each year. The values are based around each NFL team's stadium, along with revenue of historical transactions, non-NFL events held at the stadiums, as well as purchase and investment offers for each team. In 2017, Forbes says the Dallas Cowboys generated $864 million in revenue. The New England Patriots made $593 million, and the New York Giants made $493 million. But a lot of that income isn't generated by the team itself. It actually comes directly from the NFL. For the 2017-2018 season, the NFL generated a revenue share of over $8 billion from TV deals, merchandising, and licensing deals. That's known as the national revenue. And no matter how well or how bad your team does, Teams split the national revenue evenly 32 ways, meaning teams around the league received more than $255 million from the NFL in 2018. But that's just one way a team generates income. There's also something called local revenue. That's everything a team generates itself. For the 2017-2018 season, the local revenue for the Packers made up about 43% of the team's total revenue. Ticket sales and stadium attendance are a part of the local revenue. Not only do NFL teams make money on game day, but they can also make money from non-NFL events by renting out the stadiums for concerts, live events, and tours. The Green Bay Packers spent more than $370 million to upgrade Lambeau Field, including adding thousands of seats to the stadium. Since renovations began back in 2010, the Packers have seen ticket sales jump from $48 million to $71 million. But game attendance isn't the only source of revenue for teams. There are also a lot of corporate sponsors. Some teams like the Philadelphia Eagles have over 40 corporate sponsors. In the 2017-2018 season, the NFL sponsorship revenue totaled more than $1.3 billion. These sponsorship deals range from putting company logos on practice jerseys, renting out retail space in stadiums, to landing the sole naming rights to NFL stadiums themselves. The New York Giants and New York Jets share a stadium called MetLife Stadium, and the asking price for the naming rights? Well, according to the New York Times, that deal's worth an estimated $19 million a year for 25 years, which remains one of the highest naming rights deals in the NFL. Teams may be generating hundreds of millions of dollars each year, but there are a lot of expenses that come with it. Of the $454.9 million the Green Bay Packers made in the 2017 and 2018 season, more than $420 million went to expenses. Most of it went to player costs, which made up $212.7 million that year. Stadium upkeep, marketing, team costs, and general administrative costs total $208 million. So after all the bills are paid, the Green Bay Packers are left with an operating income of $38.5 million. The Cowboys, Patriots, and Giants have huge expenses that eat up a large chunk of yearly revenue too. The Cowboys' operating income is $365 million, the Patriots is $235 million, and the Giants is $149 million. But not every NFL team is rolling in cash. 
Some NFL teams find themselves strapped for money with large overhead costs for their teams. Just take the Detroit Lions. The team had a total revenue of $361 million in 2017, but according to Forbes, the team had an operating income of $4.1 million. Another issue weighing down on the NFL, a drop in popularity among up-and-coming sports fans and players. In the wake of the concussion debate, more than 67,000 fewer high schoolers are playing football today than in 2009. But that controversy isn't affecting the NFL's bottom line. It's still seeing revenue growth. From the 2016 season to the 2017 season, the NFL's national revenue rose nearly 5%. The NFL is also seeing a boost in television ratings this season too. In September, the top 15 most watched TV shows were all NFL games. Our Thursday night game, our first game on Fox and uh, Amazon and NFL Network was up 8% last night. Um, you know, in 07, 22 of the top 100 programs were NFL games. In 10 years later, in 17, 72 of the top shows were NFL games. So despite all the controversy, it may be a while before NFL teams take a hit. 